Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda. Today we are thrilled to have Kieran J. Callanan back with us. How are you doing? I'm doing, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> You're in uh, prime cowboy mode, it looks like uh, today. Prime cowboy mode. Uh, yeah. What's what's going on? Prime beef. Uh, I'm, uh, what's going on? I'm living yeah. on tour. Yeah. Uh, feeling good. Yeah. Feeling fantastic. Looks like you're kind of dressed for your next album, which may be an Americana album. <laughs> uh, you know, because you do have spurs. We should, since you, I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually wearing spurs before. So you know, I've, I've been getting into horse riding a bit. Not that I use the spurs on the horses. That's, right. That's sort of uh, that would be wrong. It's frowned upon these days. Right. And I'm not really interested in uh, digging into beautiful beast. Right. Do you use them on your band members? Uh, I, I, I just need to <laughs> scratch my shins, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, no, I like the sound they make because you right. walk down a hall, you know, there's a certain anxiety that follows you yeah. or is preceded by you, you know, um, when you've got the spurs on. Um, sets a tone. Uh, you know, looks good. Yep, you're, you're right about Feels that. Feels good, yeah. you know. Very cool. Um, yeah. Now we got a few things to talk about. Obviously, you have the new album Bravado out, mm -hmm. which is very different than the previous record, and it's got lots of people talking about it. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, um, today is the marks the opening of the New Zealand International Film Festival, Wonderful. and you're actually part of it. Am Be I? Because they're playing the entire Top of the Lake new season. Beautiful. As, like in one long session. Yeah. And you have some role in that, right? I do have some role in that with Jane Campion and all yeah. that. So tell me what what you're involvement is with that? Um, I did my best yep. not to be a part of it at all. <laughs> um, it failed. I failed, you know, it, it, uh, but um, I was asked to um, audition for a kind of minor role. Right. And uh, sort of reluctantly went in there, you know, I don't have an agent or anything. Uh, Ari and Jane co-direct the series. Uh, Jane wrote it with Gerard Lee, um, but Ari and Jane direct it together. Right. Also direct a few episodes each. And uh, and Ari um, knew my music. I didn't know either of them, but he knew my music. And uh, so, you know, they'd seen my video clips and, and thought I could be right for this sort of pervert, sex pest character, why, why they thought that. It's stereotyped yeah, again. Yeah, I huh? mean, you know, it's a bit of a slap in the face. But, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to take what you can get, I suppose. But um, I sort of reluctantly went in there and did a terrible audition and didn't get the part, mm -hmm. um, as you'd expect. But, you know, I didn't hear anything for a while and I knew I didn't get the part. And uh, But I then did hear something and they asked... Uh, Oh, they said, oh, sorry, we didn't get back to you, you know. Right. But uh, you're not right for the part, but actually think you could be right for this other, much bigger part. And I was in America at the time. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm away. I can't, you yeah. know. And they're like, can you do a video audition? And my girlfriend sort of forced me into uh, doing that, you know. Right. And uh, so she she filmed me doing this video audition, uh, you know, doing the, the, the scene uh, to my laptop. And... Um, and then she kind of spun the laptop round at the end and flashed her breast at the camera. Oh, well, I <laughs> and thinking probably I was going to edit that out, but I didn't. I sent that video to them. And that's what got me the role, <laughs> I think. Um, but uh, yeah, so shot that last year. Right. Um, I play um, Detective Robin Griffin's younger brother, right. Liam. Uh, Liam Griffin. Uh, it's set in Sydney, the first series, which I was a huge fan of. In fact, um, I mean, I'll get to this, but the first series is set in New Zealand, mm -hmm. uh, but the second series is set in Sydney, where I'm born and raised. Right. Uh, so it's beautifully presented, you know, and Jane lives in Sydney and Gerard lives in Sydney. So, you know, in a way it was them wanting to frame their city, you know, with a certain magic and mystery, the way that they see it and the way I see it too, actually. So in, in that sense, um, you know, it resonated with me. Uh, but, you know, bizarrely, I'd, I'd actually started watching the first series a couple of years ago when, uh, when it came out. I was in America on tour at the time and a bit homesick, you know, missing the Antipodean way of life. Yeah. And uh, I started watching it because I'd actually worked on the music for the first series. Ah. Mark Bradshaw, who does the score and uh, the score for both series, contacted me in the first series and asked if I'd contribute to the music. And we worked together for a number of weeks 
in my studio up in the Blue Mountains where I was living at the time. And uh, it just didn't work out. Mm. You know, him and I weren't clicking. I think he had a very different idea of what I'd bring to it. Um, he's a classical musician. You know, we were approaching it from very different angles. Mm. And uh, I mean, I thought this was cool stuff happening, but it was a sort of slow process. And he, uh, he left for London and ended up finishing the score from there. So I, I sort of started watching it just to see if they used any of my music. Um, wish there was snippets, I think. I don't know. Right, to this right, day, right. I'm not sure. Um, but um, I just fell in love with the show. And so to come full circle and then be asked to be in yep. the second series was, um, you know, it was a nice full stop at the very least to how it started. And, and I mean, we'll see. Hopefully there's another series as well. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. So the other thing that you, just recently that you've been involved with was this little tribute concert, I, for want of a better term, uh, mm -hmm. for the go-betweens, yep. where you guys um, performed. I'll, I'll just to cut you off there, Marty. Yep. Uh, there is a better term. Okay. Well, um, you know, bring it on. I wouldn't say a little tribute concert. Yeah. I'd say ecstatic. <laughs> uh, privilege. Ah, great. Because uh, it actually had several members of the Go Betweens performing. Yeah, so. 16 Lovers Lane. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, 30 years on from the release of that album, their sixth album, which is, you know, an incredible record. Right. Seminal record, I guess, in Australian music. Um, yep. And so they put together this concert with Lindy Morrison, Amanda Brown, and John Wilsteed, who are th three members from the Go Betweens from that record. Yep. Uh, Grant McLennan. Uh, singer songwriter has passed since passed away, yeah. and Robert, the other singer songwriter, wasn't a part of the show. Although yeah. I got wind that he was there, a few people <laughs> spotted him having dinner outside. You know, it was at, as, right. uh, or someone said they saw him. You know, in the lobby, it was at the Queensland uh, Arts Centre, performing arts centre, QPAC, right, uh, in the concert hall there. So beautiful um, room in Brisbane, where the Go Betweens originally from. Yep, um, you know, playing to a sold out crowd of sort of diehard um, fanatical romantics, really, I'd, I'd, is the way I'd put them, incredible. And the songs are really dear to me and yeah. and the lineup was pretty amazing, good mix of old and new, you know. So what, what did you end up doing? I did, uh, I did two songs. Um, I did Twin Layers of Lightning, which is actually from the previous album, right? Uh, Liberty Bell and the Black Diamond Express, but I did Twin Layers of Lightning um, and then for the encore, Ron Pino from the Died Pretty, mm. um, and I sung a duet of Apology Accepted, which again is from Liberty Bell. Liberty Bell, but you know we played a, the whole of Sixteen Lovers Lane, yeah. and then uh, some other songs as well. But you know, I mean, even that for me to sing a duet with Ron Pino, um, who I'm not sure if you're familiar with Marty, but Died Pretty are a iconic. Uh, I've heard of Died Pretty. I just yeah, so he was the singer. He was the singer of uh, Died Pretty, uh, which for anyone watching uh if you don't know them you should check them out sort of iconic 80s and 90s australian uh sydney kind of pub rock but different thing you know sort of a unique sound um cool really spirited uh and uh poetic cool yeah so anyway to, to, to be sharing a dressing room and sing a song with ron right uh, not to mention Steve Kilby, yeah, um, Steve's great, <laughs> and Dan Kelly, um, you know, uh, as well as a bunch of young acts as well, sort of upcoming Brisbane acts, right? Um, Montaigne, Cub Sport, and stuff. It was it was beautiful. It was really had a lovely feeling. Yeah, um, it's cool. And the other thing was closer to Auckland's home, since we're right down the street from Roundhead Studio. Mm -hmm. You opened for Crowded House. I did. Which, from what I've read, yep. uh, you also my greatest honor right. and privilege. Uh, <laughs> and the response from the audience was interesting, was it? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think everyone, including Neil, had expected it to be a bit divisive. Right. <laughs> I think Neil had me open because it reminded him a bit of Split Ends. Right. All the yeah. spirit, at least, that they took into Split Ends. And I think from the beginning, there was a lot of head scratching um, and folded arms and sort of disgruntled, this isn't what I paid for, kind right. of, uh, you know. Was it a but, free, it was a free concert, wasn't it? No, not no, a free concert. Oh, it wasn't. No, no, was so, so 20 years ago, uh, when Crowded House played on the forecourt of the Opera House to yeah. 100,000 people, whatever it was, um, 
that was a free concert. Right. But this was uh, very expensive. <laughs> and it was a much smaller crowd. It was over four nights, right. about oh, five, okay. 6,000 people a night. So still, you know, big audience. And it, it was, the last night was broadcast live on television as well. Quite amazing. Um, quite amazing thing to be part of. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Neil and, and Tim, obviously, we split ends had a band that was very divisive mm-hmm. and I think upset a lot of people especially in the early days yeah. um, was flamboyant and theatrical and and uh, you know definitely singular and, and at times difficult so you know there was there was a through line there and so that could that could possibly even describe you yeah I mean I'd hope so <laughs> I'd, I'd, to, to, to be to be uh, to be have anything you know a through line there is, is, is amazing so yeah, it it was very emotional. You right. know, my shows were great uh, for me. It was a privilege, but but the crowded house shows were just. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just I just cried every night. You know, and it was always a different song that would get me going. Right, right. But uh, once I started, I couldn't stop. Cool. All right. So getting on to your music, mm-hmm. uh, bravado. Um, when I met you at the door here and asked how you were, you said you were quite a different person than you were last time mm-hmm. we met, mm-hmm. which was a couple of years ago. So yep. how, how have you changed? What does that mean? Well, I think last time we met was off on the, uh, just after Jack Ladder record, yeah. Playmates had yep, come yep, in. Yep, yep, yep. Um, which again was, is, you know, I feel like as a musician, I'm constantly going through different incarnations and wearing different hats, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> exactly. But um, <laughs> look, I, uh, I think with this record, Compared to my first record, certainly, it's just a lot more fun. Right. It's more fun for me. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd had the unexpected sort of uh, ride of of having a critically acclaimed or at least well received album of, of garnering pockets of fans around the world, of being able to tour around the world, and uh, not take myself so seriously. Mm-hmm. But I think you know, simultaneously, there's a there's a there's a parallel to that where you know, having fun with these songs and, and making them, you know, as the album title suggests, full of bravado and bombast. And yep. it sort of paints a very personal picture as well. I think it's the realest record I've done. And it, at times that attention seeking is actually <laughs> quite revealing and, and sad and maybe hopefully relatable for people as well. Right. I think there's a, there's a narrative message, maybe even a lesson in some of the songs certainly for me, but hopefully for whoever listens to it, you know, there's something personal, I think, as well, in that's not so literal, mm. maybe it's not in the lyrics or instantly um, accessible, but maybe with repeat listens, there's a, there's a humanity yeah. to, the, to the vulgarity of it all as well. <laughs> because yeah. I was reading uh, this review of, your, of the album, in yeah. The Guardian, yeah. have you seen that? Where they they kind of I think, refer I think, to you as uh, my, mom, my mom posted on taking Facebook. the piss is, taking the piss okay. is, is sure. kind of what you're doing yeah. even though you're very serious. And I was wondering what you're. I'm reaction. deadly serious about it. If you can't tell, yeah, like, uh, you know, I, 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 I think it's possibly people have a certain preconception of who you are based upon mm-hmm. what they see maybe on the videos or whatever, yep. and that doesn't jibe with. Yeah, say, I don't know. I, I, like, I, also when you're making something, all you can do is follow your instinct. And maybe at the time, music felt like a joke to me. You right. know? Maybe at the time, the whole thing felt like a joke. And that was, rather than being, uh, you know, making you lose faith or spirit or energy, that was empowering, you know? Uh, and, you know, it, it, feel, it feels like, you know, the last thing I'm interested in is uh, pastiche or, or, you know, trying to just sound like my idols you know yeah. or even sound like myself you know we talk about it's a different record to the first one yeah um, you know I want to keep that interesting and, yep. and fun and it gets harder and harder to do I suppose but hey good old twig hello she's interested in the hat huh? she likes the hat yeah <laughs> but um hello yeah it's nice <laughs> but uh, yeah at, by the same token I actually feel like I made exactly the same record um, That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 you know, um, there's a there's a spirit there that is consistent, and you know, yep, 
um, hopefully that, you know, talking about through lines, hopefully it continues. You know, it's only album number two, so right, yeah, we've got yeah. a long way to go. Long yeah. way to go. Well, thank you very much for coming down and talking to me. Hey, my pleasure, Mike. Good luck with the show tonight at the King's Arms. I plan on heading down there. Wonderful. After I see a movie at the film festival. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah. What, what, what are you going to see? Well, it's the opening night. Uh, something, I think it, the film is called The Square or okay. something. But, uh, Kiwi film? I don't think it is. I think it's actually a French... Swedish American collaboration. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. We'll see you later tonight. Cool. And thank th you. Thank you very much. My pleasure.